Hello everybody, Corel Painter 12.2 has been released and with this release there's several new features. My name is Skip Allen and I'd like to talk with you about one of these new features called Flow Maps. Okay, so Flow Maps, something new. What do we get with Flow Maps that we didn't have before? Well, the first thing that you might notice is we have a flow map control panel and we have a flow map library. This is very similar to paper libraries and paper control panels and we'll uh, look at that a little bit closer in a few minutes. Okay, uh, the other thing that came with Painter 12.2 are three new flow maps. You have one called Clouds, one called Fine Dots, and one called Gravel. Also, with the introduction of flow maps, in the real watercolor brush control panel, you'll find that you have a new section called Flow. And you, the flow resistance, which used to be down here in paper, has been moved to, to Flow. And you have the option to select either the current paper or the flow map to affect the directional flow of the water. Now, you also have in real wet oil the same new section called uh, flow resistance, current paper, flow map, and so forth. They're identical. So I'm going to be working, working with real watercolor, but anything that I do with real watercolor could be applied to uh, working with real wet oil. Also, we got three new brushes. We have melted flow map, noisy flow map fringe, and wet flow map fringe. You'll find those at the bottom of the real watercolor category. So if you go to the real watercolor category, and come down to the bottom. Now I have a whole bunch of other stuff in here as well, but if you come down to the bottom you'll see melted flow map, noisy flow map fringe, and wet flow map fringe. Alrighty then. Okay, so let's take a look at how these work. So if you come over here to the option menu or the fly up menu you'll see flow map control panel flow map view flow map libraries new flow map import export remove and restore to default if we go to paper libraries you'll see that everything there is essentially the same except that we have a, an option to import legacy paper libraries which we don't need with flow maps because they're new <laughs> All of this stuff is identical, so if you know how to work with your paper library, then you know how to work with your flow map libraries. Now if we go to flow maps and to papers, those are also similar. We've got the flow map preview, we have the paper preview, we have a flow map invert toggle and we have a paper invert toggle. We also have directional toggle on the paper which we do not have on the flow map. And with the flow map we've got scale, uh, contrast, and brightness and the same thing here uh, scale, contrast, and brightness. One interesting point, if you didn't know this already, the default settings for flow map and for paper are the, the scale is at 100%, the brightness, uh, the contrast rather is at 100%, and brightness is at 50. The same thing is true for a paper. This one is not at its uh, scale setting. Let's see, what else do I need to talk about here? Oh, the, the option button or flyout menu for the uh, paper control panel has rename paper, custom icon, set custom icon, capture paper, and make paper. All right, so we can capture a paper and make a paper and do these other things that you see here. And if you look at a flow map control panel, you'll find the same sort of thing rename flow map, capture icon, set custom icon. 
Now here it says capture flow map, where the other one said capture paper. And here we have create from current paper, and the other says make paper. So you can either, to make a flow map, you can either capture like a photograph or a drawing or any kind of texture that you might want to use. You simply do a control A to select the area that you want to capture and then just click on Capture Flow Map. Or capture it as a paper and then go to that paper and the paper that's active you can click on Create from Current Paper. It's very easy to make flow maps. Now I need to move this stuff over here out of the way so we can paint here and see how things are working. So I'm going to grab my paper and paper library and I'm just going to move those right over here to the navigator and then I'm going to take the flow map and flow map libraries and move that right over to the same spot. Now you may have noticed that I moved two objects at once and that's one of the new features of 12.2 You can come over here to this gray area and pick up both items and come over to and nest them wherever you would like to nest them. And I want to nest those right there above Computed Circle and Hard Media. And then I'll just take this little custom palette and stick it down there out of the way. Okay, so let's start. We've got melted flow map set up and let's go to our flow map control panel and we've selected or we have selected clouds and it's at its standard setting okay so I've got melted flow map and if I take that melted flow map and just paint it over the surface here and let go then it's going to start flowing you can see it flowing, and as it flows, you see the texture that you're beginning to uh, that's beginning to show. Now that will disappear as the not completely, but it will uh, be much more subtle as the flow continues. But you can see that there's this textured sort of appearance that happens with this flow map. Okay, just for funsies, let's take the same flow map and we'll use the next brush, which is Noisy Flow Map Fringe. Put that in and let it run. And again, you're seeing texture and the bleeding out on the edges uh, with this particular flow map. And that's really lovely. I like that a lot. Let's go over here. to Notice that we do have flow map selected. I just wanted to make sure that you understood that flow map was selected. Okay, and let's go to uh, the fringe. Uh, this is wet flow map fringe, rather. Same thing. And let it run. And you begin to see that texture. Now, interestingly enough, though, one of the things that you can do, well, before I go there, let me go over here first. I forgot to show you one thing in the flow uh, area. You have this toggle flow map control panel. So if I click on that, that brings that toggles to if you have both flow map and flow map libraries and flow map control panel open, it will toggle between them. Now if you don't have any either one of them open, so we're going to get rid of all of them. Yep, I don't see them anymore. All right, now if I toggle, it's going to open up flow maps and it'll close flow maps. It only really works with flow maps. Uh, so if I want to keep the other the flow map library open, I need to come over to the Windows control panel and come down to Flow Map Panels and select Flow Map Libraries. 
Okay, so now they're all back up in place where I'd like to keep them. Okay, now let's look at the difference here. We're going to go back to our first one, which was melted flow map. And we have flow map selected, and we know that we got that texture. Well, let's take it to current paper and do the same thing. Now when I do current paper, as it begins to fade out, I'm not getting that uh, texture that I was getting before. See how much smoother it is? So as soon as that finishes, we'll click on flow map one more time and do that like that. And there you go. You've got that texture beginning to show. Now, what if we take, what if we go and we take a flow map that is called Cloud 3? And it's at 100%, 193, and 50. And let's go to Paper, uh, Paper Libraries, and we'll select Cloud 3. Okay, we've selected Cloud 3 with paper, and it's at the same setup, 110, 193, and 50. If we go back to the flow map, you see it's 110, 193, and 50. So you want the flow map and the paper to be at the exact same size. Now, if I use this brush as is and begin to paint with it, Notice that because I have the, the flow map engaged, but I have about 50% grain set up. So 50% grain is going to show some of this paper texture that's there. It's going to affect the way the, paper, the paint has laid down. And as it flows, you're getting a double whammy. You're getting the paper change the way the paint was applied. And now the flow map with the run is affecting the direction of the water. So you're actually getting two things happening at once. If you take that concentration or the grain, sorry, up to 100, then what's going to happen is you're going to actually get white areas. See, all of this wire is being protected, but when you let go and it begins to flow, then uh, you know, it's flowing into the, it's like a way of keeping some white paper there. It's like now we're flowing into that white paper and getting another kind of texture.